Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal Ann Compton, and I hope that you, wherever you are on the planet today, I hope that you are having a beautiful day, and I hope that your Christmas was wonderful, or your Kwanzaa, or your Hanukkah, or however you celebrate your Yule. I also am just so excited and hopeful for your 2023. We are on the brink of a new year. It is New Year's Eve, and that is why I am popping up to share something with you. I'm going to be sharing the audio from my most recent podcast drop today in which I detail a ritual, a magical ritual that I want us all to do for 30 days. Now, you don't have to go somewhere, put your email in, sign into a website, none of that. I'm just going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to ask you to join me in your heart and in your mind and in your consciousness. And then after 30 days, so at the end of January, we're going to come back and we're going to give testimonies because I know, I know that things are going to happen for the people of source. We're going to have miracles. We're going to have manifestations. We're going to have phenomena. We're going to have up leveled, upgraded consciousness, new understanding, knowledge, like all things are possible, but the blessings are going to be rolling in for those who participate in this ritual. And so I didn't want to just leave this for the Life Magnetics listeners. I also had to include my OG YouTubers. At the end of January, I will make another video and I'm going to come with my testimonies because I already know and I feel so strongly that a lot's going to shift in my personal life. And there are some specific things that I would be super jazzed and stoked for if they happened or manifested. And if they do, well, when they do, I'm going to make sure to include that in my testimonial. I feel it strongly. I feel led by spirit to share this with you. And so think about it. Think about whether you can commit to a couple of super simple rituals per day, but every day for 30 days. And think about whether you can come back and join the community and talk about it afterwards. I'm excited. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today. Now, even if you don't do these rituals or this practice for the next 30 days, that's okay. Just know that I love you and I'm still here after all these years, honey. I'm still here, still standing, and I have got nothing but love for you. All right, without further ado, let's get into today's audio video. And I just wanted to do a little bite-sized episode today, right before we click over into the new year. Um, it doesn't really matter when you're listening to this. Um, it's You can still do what we're going to be talking about doing in this episode at any time. But like, I really love the specific energy, uh, the liminal energy and nature of the end of one year and the clicking over into a new year. There really is different energy and momentum and amplification around that which we want to manifest. And it's like the consciousness grid of humanity just kind of sets itself up to dream and to make resolutions, which in my opinion, have kind of taken on not a negative connotation, but it's like a little, a little heavy sometimes, right? But it's like we all understand deeply, collectively, that there's potential in the air. And it's such a great time to reset your mind, to call in that which you truly want to be and that which you truly want to have. Like the Bible says, he speaks to the unseen as though it was seen and the unseen becomes seen. Like you have to actually interact with what isn't manifested yet as if it's already here though as if you're already grateful for it and in doing so that unseen thing you want to manifest is made manifest that's the whole key that's how you do it so what I thought would be super cool for all of us for the next 30 days is to do a series of small super easy simple fun rituals and see what happens. <laughs> These are morning rituals and evening rituals that I want us all to do together. First and foremost, I love the idea of hundreds and thousands of us out here agreeing together to do these specific and highly charged rituals in order to change our lives and experiences together. Because when we join in this agreement, when we join in our consciousness, that's when we start cooking with gas. Everything is accelerated. Everything is amplified. And that which we are agreeing upon is made manifest. You know, the Bible says, and I, and, and I know that you know 
because I always say, I am not, I would not say that I am a, a fundamentalist Christian at all. I would say I'm kind of a mystical Christian. I'm not a religious person at all. I'm spiritual, but I still hold fast to some of these biblical scriptures that I think are magical, filled with fire words and um, magic words. And one of these scriptures is in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, where Jesus is saying that when two of us on earth agree about any old thing, of course, I'm paraphrasing, Jesus spoke a bit better than I, but when you and I agree on any old thing, our father in heaven is going to do it for us. Whether that thing we're agreeing upon is good, good for us, good for the world, whether it's bad or indifferent, whether it's neutral, whatever it is we agree upon, God's going to do it for us. So how about this? How about we start right before the new year, agreeing together that we are going to call in blessings, that we are going to manifest at the highest level according to our soul's highest vision for ourselves, that we're going to call in health and healing and abundance, specifically money, honey, that we're going to be calling in all of these things. In fact, we're calling in exactly what we need right now to get to the next level. And may it be comfortable. May it be sweet. May it be easy. Because sometimes when we have to change or we're called upon to change so we can manifest differently, sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be traumatic. But like, may it be sweet. May it be easy and may it be comfortable. Let us all agree upon this. And wherever you are, if you're in your car, if you're making dinner for the kids, if you're lying in your bed listening to me at night, wherever you are, just say to yourself out loud or in your inner world, yes, I agree. Let's say it together. Yes, I agree. And I'm already getting goosebumps. You see, because time is just a construct of the third dimension, honey. So I can feel ahead of time how many of you just said that and felt that. And I love it. And let's do it. Let's rock the kingdom. Here we go. We're manifesting. Here are the rituals that I want to do with you for the next 30 days starting on January 1st. They're very simple. There's a morning ritual and an evening ritual. Let me break it down for you. The morning ritual goes as follows. As soon as we wake up, before we get out of bed, certainly before we turn on our phone. Try not to do that, by the way, for a while after you get up. Before you get out of bed, before you go to the restroom, brush your teeth, anything. What you want to do is pull a journal into your lap and take out a pen or a pencil and write down three things that you are grateful for. And let it be authentic. Let these things um, come to you in a feeling way. I can think of three things right now. I'm not going to write it down. I'm just going to say, I'm so grateful for my husband. Oh, what a tall drink of water that guy is. And his hugs, by the way. If you've ever been to one of my retreats, you already know. Jeremy Compton knows how to hug somebody. But I just love him. He's so supportive. And what a life partner. I'm really grateful for this man. That was easy. Second thing is I'm very grateful for my house, for my shelter, that I'm warm, that I've I've got something to call my own, that I've got some land that takes care of my animals and we've created a beautiful habitat for the birds and the squirrels and the kitties and the doggies. I'm just grateful. Thank you for this house. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the third thing that I'm grateful for just off the top of my head are my daughters. My beautiful daughter, Alyssa, who is married to my beautiful daughter-in-law, but I mean, I call her my daughter, Kara. I actually married them. I became an ordained minister to do that. And I mean, what a joyous, beautiful occasion that was. And um, they were living in Phoenix for a while and they moved back to North Texas to be closer to us. We see each other every week, like multiple times. I'm so in love with my life, with my daughters here. Ooh, I'm grateful. See how easy that was? I know. And these are just things that are present in my life every day. And I can easily think of three new things tomorrow. But what am I feeling grateful about? Let it be active and alive in you. And of course, you're just waking up. So you're not as perky and wordy as somebody like me in this moment. But that's okay. Just quickly write down three things and try to do this in a feeling way. Like really feel grateful. And after that, what I want you to do is recite the Ho'oponopono prayer. The Ho'oponopono prayer is made up of four small, short, little statements. And those statements are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Again, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And let me just break down the Ho'oponopono for you. 
If you have someone in your life that you're currently at odds with, maybe a coworker, you're just not getting along, maybe your relationship with your mom's not so great, or maybe somebody's hurt you in the past and you're still holding on to it, or maybe there's a memory or a trauma or something that kind of bubbles to the surface enough that you notice it, that you know that you're kind of carrying it inside of you. When doing this Ho'oponopono prayer, if there's anything like that, anything, anyone, any situation or condition that you would like to release, we want to think about that person, place, or thing, and then recite the Ho'oponopono prayer. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. We want to do that three times or seven times, however much time you have. Maybe you've got time for seven times. I like numbers. Three is the number of God. Seven is the number of introspection, spirituality, activation in these things, knowledge. So recite that Ho'oponopono prayer in a feeling way, thinking about your mom who you're having an issue with, thinking about that memory that you are ready to release and feeling in your spirit, your mind and your body, each of those words, feel that sorry, honey, and feel that forgive me, feel that thank you, feel that I love you. Even if the person that you are releasing hurts you deeply and you're mad, you want to get to a place in your energy where you can say that feelingly like pop up out of the life, out of the 3D, out of the memory and get to that really spiritual divine place where the soul on a soul level can say, I'm sorry for everything that's happened. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. Now, on the off chance that you don't have anybody that you need to forgive or make amends with or release or heal, no trauma, you're just in a great place and you have been for a little bit, that's fine. We want to do a global collective consciousness ho'oponopono. Recently on a Miraculous Thinking podcast, somebody had written in who was really like tortured and suffering about the plight of animals on our planet. And I suggested the ho'oponopono. She didn't do anything personally or individually to hurt an animal, never would. But collectively, as a species, as humanity, she can rise above into that meta space and she can say, I'm sorry for humanity and please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And she can send that energy to the beautiful animals. So if you've got nothing that you need to make amends for, try to rise up above and just advocate on behalf of humanity for anything that we might need to make amends for. And that will be sufficient because the power of the Ho'oponopono is that it's creative. It is moving. It is restoring. It is healing in places and spaces that you aren't even conscious to. And you could even be pointing your Ho'oponopono at a specific person, but because you're in the energy of love and forgiveness and compassion and gratitude, it's spreading out from that person to other people and other traumas and other conditions, and it's healing those too. That's the power of Ho'oponopono and saying it consistently every day for 30 days, honey, we're calling in the miracles. That is the morning ritual. To recap briefly, you wake up, you grab your journal, you write three things that you are grateful for, and then you recite the Ho'oponopono prayer with someone in mind or not, as yourself, for yourself, or for collective consciousness humanity, three times or seven times. And then you get out of bed and you go about your day. At the end of the day, we do a similar ritual. We're in bed, ready to go to sleep. We take that journal back out. We get our pen and we write down three things that were just awesome about the day. Three things that worked out. Three things that went your way. Three little successes that you might have had. Three observations. Wow, what a beautiful sky today. Three experiences that you had that just made you feel good. Oh, my dogs were so cute today. Whatever that is, just three things that were nice, good, beautiful, or lovely about your day. Write that down. And then we're going to do another Ho'oponopono. We're going to do it in the same way using the same words. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And again, you can direct this at someone or not. You can also direct this at anybody that you met today, any experience that you had today that needs light and love and healing. You can do whatever you want, but say that prayer three to seven times. And then the last thing we want to do, the last piece of this ritual is the Isn't It Wonderful Neville Goddard technique. When I tell you that this technique covers 
a multitude of intentions. It covers a multitude of desires. It is kind of a broad application that we can use and do to call in manifestations at the highest level. And I ask you, who doesn't want that? I know that I do. The technique is really simple. So after you've written three things down that you enjoyed in your day, after you've done the Ho'oponopono, what you want to do is get comfy in your bed, turn off your light, begin to feel yourself relax. We really kind of want to be in a semi-trance state. We call this a hypnagogic state. Um, And when we're in that state, which Neville Goddard calls a state akin to sleep or sats, what we want to say to ourselves, and preferably this is happening in the inner world, so you're thinking it, you want to say to yourself, isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? And here again, I like numbers, so I would probably say this at least three times, but I'm probably more likely to say it seven or nine times. And the trick to this is that you must recite this in your inner world in a feeling way. Meaning, you have to feel wonderful. You have to feel the vibration of what is wonderfully possible. You've got to hook into that and feel it in your body, mind, and spirit as you're reciting it inwardly. So you're saying to yourself, isn't it wonderful? But you're also feeling, wow, that's wonderful. I know something is going to come for me tomorrow or next week or next year. And it's just going to be so good, so wonderful, so lovely. And build your energy, your vibe up in alignment with that sentiment that you just know that you know that isn't it wonderful? Oh, it's so good. Now, the trick here is also not to get so excited with the wonderful thing coming that you knock yourself out of sats or that state akin to sleep, which is the trance, but you're just kind of hanging out in that sweet spot of reverie and feeling, but not feeling too much, but feeling enough and then drop yourself off to sleep with isn't it wonderful. And here's the thing about this technique that makes it so truly and literally magical. When we do not define wonderful, We actually put that universal order in and then spirit or source or God gets to decide what wonderful is for us. And I ask you, who do you think knows better about what wonderful is? You in your human incarnation or God or the archangels or this highly charged and perfectly complementary universe? Well, the answer is the latter, God, the angels, the universe, like this beautiful divine infrastructure that's been put into place to support you knows exactly what is wonderful. In fact, the most wonderful for you. And so when we say, isn't it wonderful? Oh, thank you. Isn't it wonderful? And we fall asleep in the space and energy of that. The universe, we could also call this Neville Goddard would say it is the subconscious sets about immediately to create wonderful for us according to what the universe knows the soul wants. That's the benefit of this. Now, a modification of the isn't it wonderful technique is to say, isn't it lovely? You can say, oh, isn't it lovely? But let's stick for the 30 days. Let's stick to isn't it wonderful? And then let's see what comes in. Because I'm going to tell you something. You're going to start logging in your gratitude journal, new things, unexpected things, miraculous things that the universe is actively delivering to you minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day. So that by the time we're all out of this 30 day We say exercise, but no, ritual, divine magical practice. By the time we are out of this, our whole lives are going to have shifted collectively together in that amplified way, but in ways that serve us at the highest level, the soul of who we are. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Again, the evening ritual is three things that happened in your day, Ho'oponopono, and Isn't It Wonderful? Now, both of these rituals, morning and evening, will be detailed in the description of this podcast, so you can check for it there. Um, But 
As you're listening to this, go ahead and look through your journals, find one that you can use dedicated to this next 30 days. Or if you don't have a journal, like go out and buy one. I love getting like little um, celebratory, ornate, kind of fancy, special, sacred journals that are aligned with the intention of what I'm trying to do or to learn. So get something that's in alignment with what you're wanting to manifest and then do this every day. Can you do this every day? I'm going to do it every day, every day in the morning and every day in the evening. And I want to check back in with you after the 30 days and I'll give you a personal testimony and accounting of what's been shifting and manifesting and magicalizing in my life. And I'm going to want to hear from you too. So you can DM me on Instagram. You can leave a comment on one of my YouTube videos. You can write me directly at crystal at crystallancompton.com. And let me know, how is this changing your life? Because I believe, I know that if we all do this and we all do it in a feeling way, which is just another way of saying in an embodied way, that God is going to do some good, good work. And I'm down for that. Let me conclude this episode by saying, hey, I love you. And also, it's going to be all right. And also, all is well. And last but not least, we're in this together. You're not alone. I'm here with you. And there are so many others listening right now that are also with you. That matters. Our consciousness, our hearts are connected. We're family. And I'm just excited to see what we can do as a family. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you more for participating in the upcoming 30 days. And until next time, never forget that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys. <laughs>